please welcome Ryan Mitchell. Um, I found a fork in a public bathroom the other day. Um, the implications there, there are many and they're all very concerning because if, if you think about all the scenarios that would justify bringing a fork into the bathroom, there are actually none ever. Uh, whatever this person was eating better been made from God's tears because that's the only valid excuse and even then it's questionable. Like you can't bring an Easy Mac into the bathroom. So this person left the fork in the bathroom when they walked out, which means they finished whatever they were eating while they were in the bathroom. But honestly, I think it's better because I have no idea how you walk out of a bathroom holding food. Oh, well, you know, they're giving out free samples in there. You gotta try it. I don't know about you guys, but I've been pretty bored lately. Um, I've been getting into oatmeal recently. Um, so yeah, things have been slow, they've been slow. Speaking from experience, if you ever find yourself eating oatmeal regularly, that's pretty much a red flag that something is wrong. Uh, like you should only be eating oatmeal if uh, there's nothing left in the pantry or you're 75 years old. In my case, it was neither. Oatmeal is the bare minimum for a food. It looks like it was the first food they made before they invented flavor and texture and they just never came back around for a second pass. They saw the first draft and they're like, hmm, hot mush that tastes like nothing. Yeah, that'll work. Even the oatmeal companies, they know there's no appeal to oatmeal. They don't even bother putting what it tastes like on the packaging. They just throw on random buzzwords like heart healthy, reduces cholesterol, cures cancer, improves your credit score. But no, I, I've always been a pretty picky eater, um, but I've been trying to branch out recently, you know, like extra cheddar goldfish instead of the original. And what I'm discovering is that there needs to be a line drawn between what we can eat and what we should eat. For example, snails, like, I, I know we can't eat them. I got that part. Uh, but on the other hand, we could also probably eat mulch if we wanted to. Like if you ever find yourself craving a snail, just grab some pizza rolls instead. You'll feel way less nauseous afterwards. Trust me. My mom told me that sometimes when she was a kid, they would have liver and onions for dinner and they did it on purpose. Liver and onions sounds like a punishment. No, this should be 50% onions. And the other half is liver. <laughs> How did that one get the green light? Like there was no vetting process. Nobody in the back was like, oh, hey guys. Uh, I mean, I love the concept. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but maybe we just pick one, right? Maybe we swap out the onions for some cheese, the liver for literally anything else. There are some foods that are just too gross to serve though. They can't do it. So what they do is they call it a delicacy. And what's fun about delicacies is how important context is with them. For example, if I'm eating bat poop in my house alone, I am not well and 911 should be called. But if I'm eating a bat poop at a fashion show in Paris, it costs $5,000. I'm not a big coffee fan either, but to be honest, I'm pretty sure even the people who drink coffee don't like it because they have to add like 17 things to it before they can drink it. Like at some point the additive is the coffee. I went to Dunkin' Donuts with my friend the other day and she steps up to order her coffee and delivers like a Shakespeare monologue. This order was so long. I'm going to do the dark roast with 10 scoops of sugar, 12 packets of sweetener, 14 espresso shots, a half pump of caramel. Can you actually just dump out the coffee and fill it with creamer? Thanks. With all the espresso shots and sugar people put in, it's honestly probably safer and cheaper to just do cocaine. My friend has to have two cups in the morning before you can talk to her. And that's a policy a lot of other coffee drinkers have. And I think it's smart because that gives her an excuse to be as awful as she wants to anybody without repercussions. Like she could stab me in the face and burn all my stuff and be like, sorry, I haven't had my coffee yet. You know how I get. I do wish cocaine addicts were as open as coffee drinkers about their addiction now. Oh my God, do not talk to me before I do at least three lines in the morning because I tend to get a little cranky. No, but I get the same way. Like don't talk to me in the morning before I've had at least two bowls of oatmeal. Thank you. <laughs>